So uh, to begin with, if you think about what makes for an excellent school, you want to have a group of students who are encouraging uh, each other to learn and um, providing that type of environment. You want to make sure that you have an active set of parents, parents who are volunteering in the classroom and helping the school in other ways. And obviously, you want to have a, a excellent core of teachers and, uh, and a principal to lead, lead that on. The problem is that nationally, it is very difficult to create those conditions uh, when you have high concentrations of poverty. So let me just talk a little bit about the data on those, those three sets of actors in any school. The students, uh, the parents, and the teachers. So to start uh, with the students, we know that in high poverty schools, uh, because children are coming from disadvantaged uh, backgrounds, there are higher levels of uh, disorder in the classroom, teacher disrespect, for example, at the national level is, is higher. There are higher levels of teacher, uh, of student mobility. So low income families uh, are forced to move more often than middle class families and that creates uh, disruption in the classroom. Any teacher will tell you that um, having kids constantly come in and out of the classroom during the school year is, is a disadvantage. Uh, and that happens, that, that movement happens more in high poverty schools than low poverty schools. And the third thing is that in low poverty schools, uh, children come on average uh, to school with, uh, with uh, larger vocabularies, um, and that's something that's important because we know that children are learning from one another all the time. And so you can imagine a low-income student, given the chance to go to an economically mixed school, will be surrounded by peers who have larger vocabularies than if some, a low-income student is forced to remain in a, in a high-poverty school. 